for anybody who's watching the recording um, after the fact, I'm Amy Schultz. I'm co-founder and head coach at Boulder Money. We're a company on a mission to close the gender wealth gap. And we do that through money coaching for women. We believe firmly that having conversations about money where we can come together in a safe space and be vulnerable and get our questions answered and talk about the more emotional topics around money is so important. And so in everything we do, you'll notice that we talk about the mindset and the action, right? What are the steps that we need to take to feel financially confident, to feel secure, to really build more wealth? And then what are the habits that we need to have in place? So with every talk we do, you'll notice that that comes into play. Um, feel free to ask questions today. Feel free to put things in the chat. We really want to hear from you. We have an amazing facilitator today. So Jessica is here with us. She's one of the our new Boulder coaches. Um, but she's not new to this world at all. She's been in the financial industry for quite a while. And Jessica's worn many hats. Um, she was a CPA, so she did taxes and accounting. She's done um, financial planning and analysis for companies, and she is a financial advisor. So she's also able to give a holistic look of what investments you should be um, doing for your risk appetite and what you should be doing for your future goals. So Jessica, I'm gonna hand it over to you. I'm super excited to learn from you. I think um, for everybody, we'll just we'll dive into the basics of investing, just kind of assume everyone's on the same page and then we will um, we'll answer whatever questions you have <laughs> and hopefully get you started with some um, investments of your own today. So thank you, Jessica. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining today. My name is Jessica, as Amy said, and today we're going to be talking about investments and mainly opening it up for questions that you have. I know Lala wrote a question in the community, so that's great. We will talk about that. Um, as well as any other questions you have, it's an open forum. I will be sharing um, some slides just on an introduction to investing. Um, and when I talk about investing, I'm mainly right now talking about outside of retirement accounts. So retirement accounts are a little bit of a different type of investment that we can and will talk about for questions. But for today, we're going to be talking also about just general um general kind of middle money investing is what I call it. So we're going to go over when you're ready for that um, and everything. But uh, go ahead and, as Amy said, ask any questions in the chat along the way, and I'll try to pause as well throughout. Um, as Amy mentioned, I am really focused on investing in particular for women, getting more money in the hands of women. And I believe that investing is such an important way to do that and to grow your wealth. So that is why I'm very passionate about it. Um, here's our agenda for today. We're gonna take a step back and just talk about literally what is an investment. When people say investments, what are they talking about? And then when are you ready to start investing? What does it take to, to be kind of ready for that journey? And then how and where to start? Um, just some ideas on how you can actually take that step. And then we'll go over kind of what we like to call a diversified portfolio. So you might have heard the word diversification when it comes to investments, and that can be a little confusing about what that even means. So I'll be taking you into that a little bit, and then we'll have a lot of time for Q&A. So now to take a step back and really start at the basics, what is an investment? You might hear people talk about investments in a lot of different ways. And so I wanted to put it very simply. An investment is made by putting liquid money or cash into something else, which in the industry they call an asset, in the hopes that it will grow over time. So we can talk about many types of investments, and I'll go over the types. But base, at a base level, that's what an investment is. You're not keeping your money in cash. You're doing something else with it so that it grows. However, you do want to consider quite a few things when you start an investment portfolio. One thing is tax rates. There's different tax rates for different investments. And uh, as a coach, I would guide you through all of that and make sure you understood all the different ones. You would also want to care about your timeline. So if you need funds for something like a house or a trip or paying off debt, you might, um, you might consider different investments depending on your timeline. 
And then there's different levels of risk, of course. Amy mentioned, depending on your risk appetite and your risk tolerance, I would suggest different investments. Uh, I hear quite a few people nowadays talking mm -hmm. about things like crypto and Robinhood and day trading. And that takes a different risk level than some of the other types of investments we're going to do. So you always want to make sure you're actually tying your investments to the type of risk you're willing to take. And then diversification is key to successful portfolio. And portfolio is just a fancy word of saying all your investments. So diversification is what we'll also talk about. And that's mainly to just protect your money as best we can as things go up and down. Okay. Oops, go the other way. So when are you ready to start investing? Now that's like a key question that I get quite a bit. And every time I will usually say, start now. Um, I don't care what you start with, start small, but start now. Um, investing thrives on time. So there's a, there's a lot of words for it, like compounding or time in the market, but basically because of the mathematics of the growth, the sooner you can start, the better. Um, however, there are a few things we definitely wanna make sure you're tackling before you start investing. So those are listed below. Um, the first is an emergency fund and or a rainy day fund, which you might've heard about through Boulder, which has a few considerations. You wanna think about your job stability, your fallback plans and any dependents you have. So we wanna make sure that's intact before you move on. Then you wanna make sure that you have tackled high interest debt. And it can be okay to carry some lower risk or lower interest debt, but we do wanna make sure that you've tackled any really high interest or really um, just kind of high uh, importance debt before we move to investing. And then we wanna make sure that you have focused on your retirement accounts or dependent accounts before we talk about general investing. So those are the considerations before. And then when you're ready, um, it's like, where do I start? Okay, how do I do this? There's a ton of information online, on Instagram, everywhere about like how to invest. And you might've heard someone tell you to do this or that or buy this or that stock. So I've kind of put a little like chart here just to take an overview of like, where do I start with this? Now, there's pretty much three ways to go about it when we're talking about investing in stocks. There are other things you can invest in, but when we're talking about the stock market, you can do robo-advising, general brokerage investing by yourself, or day trading or retail investing, basically. So you'll see that for you, the level of effort goes up from robo-advising, that's the least effort. That's where you're gonna put money in, answer questions, and it's going to be invested for you. The next one is general brokerage, which I'll go over in the next slide. That's where you're going to put money in. And then a, a coach or an advisor like myself will take you through what it takes to build your portfolio and what you should be putting in there. Then the last one's going to be like a Robin Hood or retail investing, where you are literally doing your own research, hopefully, and picking companies and picking stocks and buying them on your own selling them on your own, all of that. So that's going to be the most level of effort and quite, and quite frankly, based on the data, not usually the best performance unless it's going to be like a job for you. So your style and your goals will dictate which one of these you want to do. And you can learn that by talking with your coach, because if you want to be hands off and you don't want to talk about stocks and you don't want to learn about it, but you just want to know you're investing, then you might go robo advising. But if you want to learn about it, and you actually want to do research and you really want to pay attention to the companies and the news, then you might do Robinhood. And then if you're somewhere in the middle, then you would do a general investment account. So that is just a quick overview on kind of where you can start. And this is, um, you know, you can look at uh, later as well. It's a little more information, but this is like an overview of if you're going to go the general brokerage amount, uh, account, sorry, route, where do you do that and how do you do that? And the way you do it is you open an account and then you move money, you move cash uh, from your savings account into there, and then you have to invest the account. So I know Lala actually asked a question about her Roth IRA and investing it. And so we do need to invest those funds. Once you move it, you then have to invest it. So that's a critical piece because sometimes it can sit there and you won't know that it's sitting in cash. 
So I've given an overview of, in my experience, these top four brokerage firms online. Um, nowadays, with Robinhood and all the other options, the fees are very, very low for everybody. So you're not really going to worry about fees. The only way you're going to pick one of these is whether you care about research, whether you care about the mobile experience, whether you care about customer service. You know, there's a couple of things here that I've put. But you really can't go wrong with any of these. Like I said, you just starting is the, the biggest uh, piece and wherever you want to start is fine. A lot of my clients actually start at one of these if they already have an account there. So if they already have a retirement account or like an old account that they've opened, then they, you know, I tell them to just open their individual stock account at that same place just so that it's easier. Okay. So then I just want to give an overview of different types of investments. So there are actually a lot of ways to invest. Some people, I think, think that there's just retirement accounts or there's just the stock market, but there's actually really a lot of different ways depending on your risk level and your interests. So there's insurance products, like life insurance products, which typically uh, make more sense a little bit when you are closer to retirement. There's stocks, which you probably have heard of, stocks and shares in other companies, um, as well as mutual funds, ETFs. Then there's alternatives. So this is where you're going to find some more kind of newer things or speculative things like cryptocurrency. But there's also like really interesting things like commodities and crops and gold and a lot of other things you can buy, actually, and people do buy for different reasons. And then there's fixed income, which is typically called bonds, which are really kind of just like loans to the government or to a company. And they come with a little bit of a lower risk and usually a lower rate. And then there's real estate, which can be invested in a number of ways. You can invest in real estate as an investment property. You can invest in a second home with other people. You can also invest in real estate stock funds. So without buying real estate at all, you can still invest in real estate. You can do crowdfunding for real estate. You can do flipping real estate. There's, there's a big world in real estate. So I do find that a lot of folks think that they need to just like buy a home in order to invest in real estate. And that's not necessarily true anymore. So I love to take people through the different... Um, options there, because that's a really great one if you're going to do investments in stocks and then and then balance it with something like real estate. Then lastly, there's one that a lot of my clients are really interested in, which is angel investing or venture investing. So if you care about certain things or you have friends starting certain companies or nonprofits or restaurants, you know, whatever it may be, you can actually take your money and invest in you know, things that you believe in and companies or um, people doing things that you really believe in. So there's a lot of ways to do that as well. And to also kind of push for any social justice or social impact areas that you're interested in. Okay. So those are the types. There are many types. Um, and then it's like, okay, now I know the types, like, and I know where to do it. So what do I like? What do I pick? What do I even do? And this is where like working with a coach can be really helpful to take you through these considerations. And this is what we call diversification. So diversification is really just like being smart and not putting all your eggs in one basket. Like that's pretty much it. But there are ways to diversify. You can diversify by the type of thing that you're buying. So like the types that I just listed out, you kind of want several of those. You don't want just one. And then with, you want to diversify by which ones are risky and less risky. And then you want to diversify even by things that are going to give you low returns and high returns. And that's kind of counterintuitive and doesn't sound that fun. But in times like this, like with recession, inflation, all that stuff, things like bonds are actually paying better than they would have five years ago. So that's why you do want to own some of those things. And location is a big one that people tend to not think about as much, but we tend to invest a lot domestically in the U.S. And I work with clients to make sure that we're not only in the U.S. in case things like a recession happen. You want to make sure that you have some international, some developing markets, and you know you want to be comfortable where you're investing, but also kind of 
push the envelope to make sure you're in the global market. And then lastly, industries. So you don't want to just be in like tech industry. And a lot of people, if you work at a company or if someone told you to go by Google or Tesla, you might have like only your, your portfolio might only be in tech. And we want to make sure that we have some other industries in there in case there's like a downturn or, um, or any kind of, uh, you know, downturn in that industry. And lastly, we want to build your values into your portfolio. So most people actually do care about where their money is going. They just, and we want to make sure that you're putting that into your portfolio and you're not investing in things that you don't believe in or that you are um, really like, you know, not proud of or not um, believing in for the long term. So that's a little bit about how to build it. And then we get to the last step. So you set up your account at, maybe Charles Schwab, maybe um, a robo-advisor, and then you fund your account, and then you invest your account according to some diversification, and then you don't want to forget your account. <laughs> That's the main thing. We don't want to necessarily set it and forget it. Um, with retirement, we can do that a little more, but for regular investments, we want to be monitoring at least a couple times a year, um, and definitely a, an annual review, and that's because depending on like how the balances are moving, your portfolio might get out of balance. You might all of a sudden realize, oh, like um, my stocks went up a lot. And so now I'm really heavy in stocks and I don't have any bonds or real estate or anything to offset that. So then maybe your goal for next year or the, you know, the coming years would be to balance that out. Um, or you might have some tax implications. You might be doing a gain on certain um, assets and a loss on certain assets, and you want to make a plan for selling those at the right time so that you don't get taxed um, at a really high amount. So there are a number of reasons to keep on track. And so I encourage you, once you've started investing, to schedule some check-ins, either with your coach or personally for the next year, um, and rebalance you know, the, the portfolio as needed. And then also along the way, celebrate because investing in particular for women is huge. It's a huge way to grow your wealth. Um, it's a process. It takes time to build your portfolio. But every time that you buy something or dedicate money to invest or um, buy a new type of asset, I encourage you to celebrate that and really you know, share it with our community and just you know, be proud of yourself for taking that step for your future. So that's all I have actually today. And so I wanna now turn it over to questions. Yeah, please ask your questions. Our goal today is that if you aren't already investing that we get you started. And that if you are investing and you're not feeling super confident or there's something that you wish you knew, this is the place to ask <laughs> it and we'll dive into that. Um, I had posted a, a poll it looks like half of you have answered. Um, so this just helps us kind of see, like read the room and figure out where everybody is. Um, so yeah, go ahead. And I see Shelly is unmuted. So Shelly, if you want to go ahead and take the floor. So I um, have a Robinhood account um, and I have a, an account with um, Fidelity. And I don't really consider them accounts to some degree because there's, I did it with little to no money. Um, it was something that we were discussing and I said, okay, I'm going to go for it. Um, but I do. And the reason that I have not done much with it is because I have not done uh, step number one, which is make sure that you have an emergency fund. So therefore there is not a lot of liquid funds that are going to investments. Um, my question, I guess, and I guess that would be with some coaching because I have in the Fidelity account, I think I, um, I think I started it with like $100 and I did buy, and I don't understand any of this, so I bought a portion piece of um, Apple, I believe. Um, and then in, I just opened up the Robin Hood and I did some uh, cryptocurrency. I have, what else do I have? 
Qcom, GPro, RLI, and Tesla. But it's only pieces, parts, and I have no clue what this means because like now it says investing $73.56. And I have no clue what that means. Um, it does not look like anything is truly making any money for me per se. And I don't know if that $73 means that's what I have. So I guess my whole issue is understanding what to do, like with the, um, and I think it is Apple stock. I haven't done anything. I just bought whatever I bought and I left it there. And every once in a while, I'll look in to see, did it earn anything? You know, did, did it gain anything? But beyond that, I'm clueless. Well, that's why we're here today, because you, you have done, you know, the harder hard part, which is opening the account and funding it with what you were comfortable at the time. Um, and it's very common to buy fractional shares. So like you bought about Apple, you said, you know, a portion. Pretty much everyone does that because whatever amount of money you have, you're just going to buy the amount of shares that you can afford with that. And it's never going to be like a always like a full number necessarily. So that's totally, you know, great. And, and um, Apple's a great one to buy. So, and a long-term kind of hold. Um, I would say that uh, as far as reviewing what you have, so Robinhood's user uh, interface is very difficult to understand for everybody, like everybody. Um, I don't even, you know, like it takes me a little while. I have to go over with my clients and, and we have to download some of the summaries to see what they're actually making or not making. Um, Fidelity's is easier and you could you can tell probably in there whether you've gained or lost money on that, um, what you bought. Uh, so, you know, we'd be happy to review that just to double check what you have or what you've made. But as far as what to do with it, I would say it's totally fine to leave it there for now. Um, you know, just not knowing the whole situation, but the current uh, market is down quite a bit where like if you did put money in there, I would just wait for now unless you really need it for something. Um, and then I, like I said, I would maybe go back and make sure working with a coach that you build up that emergency fund. And then, but also with that, make a plan to, you know, transfer some monthly amount or something to the Fidelity account and start building up that account in um, some different funds. Do you okay. want to add anything, Amy? I was going to say, I was typing something, just like another little summary, but um... I think too, something that might be helpful for Shelly and, and others is like around the idea of um, being consistent with investments over time, like with what you're putting in over time. So something to look at is like, yes, build up the emergency fund and then figure out what is the amount that you can put in every month, um, even if it's small to start, right? And that make make you get used to the habit of like, not only checking to see what is happening, like monitoring with it, but also like putting that money in. It's all about like paying yourself first, right? You're setting that money aside. Um, so Shelly, even if that's something that you can't do right now while building up the emergency fund at the same time, just something to keep in mind, like you got started. That's a that's huge. Like for some people that becomes a barrier itself is like not knowing what to do. Um, and you got started within two different ways. So you have different options and, and different ways of looking at things and really diversifying. So I think give yourself a pat on the back and just know that like you'll, you'll get back to it. You'll contribute to that um, consistently when you can. Okay, that's fine. Because that I, my intent when I first opened the Fidelity account was knowing that I would not be making huge contributions to it. I was, I did it with the mindset of, starting um, to put $25, um, mm -hmm. like I, I think at the time I said I would do it $25 a pay, but um, so that would have been like $50 a month so that I could build it because the whole goal is to have another option for retirement. I already have mm -hmm. a retirement account um, with my job and then I have a secondary account with my job that is 
um, one that I have to look at and see if I need to be diversifying to see if I'm actually losing any money right now. Yeah, I would say just to piggyback on that, if it's $25 a month while you're building up the emergency fund, I mean, that's amazing. Like yeah. just setting up the transfer and having it be start to build as a muscle. And then as there's more, I mean, everyone starts like somewhere. And, the, and like I said, the sooner you start, the more it builds on itself. So even if it's only $25, it, you will see over a year, two years that it's starting to compound on itself. And then ev the growth like adds on to each $25. So it's, it's a great start. I have a question here from Patricia in the chat. She said, is there any advantage to opening multiple investment accounts? I'm currently on Elvest, RoboAdvisor and Robinhood. Should I consider opening or moving to another account? Okay. Yeah. So um, I would definitely say, depending on your goals and timeline, like I said, um, that would kind of dictate a little more about what accounts you might have. But um, but yes, in general, people end up, as you build your portfolio, people end up having several accounts. So obviously retirement accounts, and then potentially if you, if you wanted a robo-advise account because you like certain parts of that, but then you want to play around a little bit with your own education and your own Robin Hood, um, there's, uh, you know, a benefit to that. And then I have other folks open other accounts for real estate investing. Like I said, there are a number of companies just focused on that. And then there's cryptocurrency, of course, which is another account. And we don't want to overwhelm you, but we also want to think about this as a long-term process to build your portfolio. So it may be that at the end of 20 years, you do have five different investment accounts focused on different things for different goals and different, um, different risk tolerances. Um, a lot of my clients, if they have a robo-advised account and then a Robinhood account and they started to learn, then actually in the end, they end up moving, they consolidate those two um, into one of these um, is what typically happens. Because once you've gone on Robinhood and done your own actual like buying of stuff, then you're ready to like do it on a bigger scale and you may not need the robo-advisor anymore potentially. Um, and then, but you do want to, if you buy one of these, I typically ad advise on like a low cost, um, a mutual fund or ETF like, um, for, uh, path. And then you can also buy individual stocks if you're interested in certain companies and really believe in them. So that's typically what happens in the long run, just because then you have more control, more transparency, and you're paying less fees than to a robo advisor. But again, it would depend on your goals and your timeline and kind of exactly what you're looking for with them. But that's like, a great, again, a great start that you did, that you have the two accounts. And then now it's a little bit more just understanding, okay, what do I want to do with these? What's my goal with these really? And, um, and seeing it a little more fun, a little more like, okay, I can do it a little more hands-on um, with the help of a coach or, you know, whatever. And then building out like a, over 10 years or five years realizing you want each piece of this puzzle that I um, outlaid here, or most, most pieces, maybe not all of them. Um, so you would need, in the end, a lot of, some of my clients have, let's say, at least six accounts, because they have one account for each type here, potentially. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think too, like, we have to think about what's our, our mindset around money, like what, you know, how is that going to make you feel to have multiple accounts? Like you kind of have to have to know your, um, your strengths when it comes to what makes you feel good and what's going to make you feel overwhelmed and like get nervous about things. Um, like I know I only have two accounts and I don't, I have no desire to have any more. And that's just like, that's okay with me. That's just like my, my preference is to keep it really simple and not, um, get into a lot of different things. One of our other coaches, Julia, she does like everything. Like she wants, every, you know, every, she would just wants her hands and everything. She wants to like learn about everything. Um, and so we're like almost completely opposite in it. And like, we're both doing fine. So it's okay. It's just about like what, you know, what works for you. Patricia, did you have a follow-up to that? Yeah, no, I was going to say, thank you. That was very helpful. Um, I did uh, the, the, for the table that you showed. So would you, do people usually have like one, just one of those accounts or like, do they all serve the same purpose or? If yeah, you want I, multiple accounts. No, yeah, they're that's they're primarily the same purpose. So you okay. wouldn't you typically wouldn't have two of these necessarily. Mm -hmm. You would have like maybe um you know a coinbase for your cryptocurrency and then 
Fundrise or some other option for real estate. And then you'd have one of these. This, this would be just one of these for stocks. So that's why I said, if you already have a retirement account through work, for instance, at any one of these or Vanguard, for, for instance, you can like just, you know, consolidate there for your individual stock market and bond needs. Um, and so this is really ends up being personal preference. Um, I like, like, I personally like Charles Schwab because I like their research tools and they have some more options on like mutual funds. But then a lot of my clients like TD Ameritrade because they like the mobile app. So it's kind of like, you know, doing your, your thoughts there. But then once you decide, then you would just have one of these. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. That makes yeah. sense. Lala, do you want to go next? I saw your hand up. Um, I have a Betterment account with called um, General Investing. And every month I put $10 in. And I also have a Digit account. And based on what I have in my account, Digit like transfer um, some money to my uh, investment account. But I don't think it's, it's not investing because all the funds so far is like from my account, like it was coming from my account. So I, I was wondering if I should take out the funds I have from those accounts and open it and start here and open an account from here, one of these accounts, if that makes sense. Yeah, great question. So Betterment, we, we would have to look in together, but Betterment is a robo-advisor. And so you could look in there and see they if it's sitting there in cash, then you would either want to you know tell them to invest it or move it out, move it into one of these and invest it on your own. Um, and we you know we could talk about where to start if you were gonna do it yourself. And I know you also asked about the Roth IRA um, at your work or some, wherever you have your Roth IRA, I think, you do need to invest that. So when you first transfer it in, it could just be sitting there as cash, like basically in a bank account. And you need to pick um, a fund, usually for Roth, or 401ks, they have a list of like retirement funds you can pick. Um, so that's a little easier, but do make sure that you go in there and, uh, you know, confirm that it's invested so that it grows uh, for retirement. And then, and then for this one, just as a, so I have a list of like funds that I would go over with a client in more detail. But one thing that you might've heard about is the S&P 500. Um, and that is like just a really like big basket of companies in the US, Apple's in there and Tesla and all of that. And so that is a good place to start and start your research if you are like, okay, let me move my Betterment funds into Charles Schwab or, or Fidelity. What do I even put it in? Um, those are 500 of the top US companies. So it's, it's definitely a good place to think about starting. Um, it's not always right for every portfolio, but it's definitely a good benchmark usually okay um I, I probably have more questions later so i should talk to my coach about it and reach out to you as well okay. thank you yeah what you can do lala is send if you think of more questions later send them to um your coach i think your coach is julia right yeah and then um what she'll do is coordinate with jessica on it if it's something that she can't answer because Je jessica has the license so she can answer like more specific specific things um if it's like general education you're in good hands with julia but um if it is stuff that's more specific for your case like we'll have jessica take a look at it too yeah great questions i have a few from diamond um so first of all diamond had said she wants to just get started with real estate investing and so i had just put so we you can talk about that a little bit jessica but i had just put um an event on our calendar a masterclass in early September. We're kind of like booking up with masterclasses, which is exciting, but we're going to have one in early September hosted by Malika, who's one of our, another one of our coaches, um, and Jessica on getting started with real estate investing. So the whole session will be about that. Um, so if you can wait until then, but if not, we'll be putting out some, some content before then too. So Diamond is interested in knowing about real estate investing, um, what's the best place to start with crypto? I think was the other question. I'm struggling to find it now. And then also, yeah, what's the best crypto account? And then also, um, there's a, yeah, so we'll do those ones. And then there's a couple more that I'll okay. talk for you. So yeah, there's going to be the masterclass on real estate investing and Malika can maybe chime into if she wants, but, um, with some 
for real estate and I have I have a different chart I can give to Amy maybe to post about this but mm -hmm. there are a number of things on the spectrum from low uh, effort to high effort like I kind of did for this and so there are things called real estate investment trusts that you can buy in one any one of these stock accounts not sure if they're available on Robinhood um, but I'd have to check but in any of these stock accounts you can look up real estate investment trusts they are basically a basket of real estate stock funds, uh, real estate companies. So if you invest in there, you're automatically invested in real estate um, in a in a like a secondary way, right, without owning a, a home. Then there are different levels of things. There are companies that do things where you can put money in and it joins with a lot of other people and then they go buy apartment buildings or hotels or whatever they do and they develop it and you get a portion of the appreciation or the payouts. And so I've got experience with a couple of those companies myself that I've been investing in for a while that are really a great way to kind of like halfway dip your toe into real estate. Like you're kind of owning um, property, but you're not like managing it yourself or like on the title or any of that. And then there's the next level, which is actually owning investment property or portions of investment property. And there's a number of ways to do that as well. You can go through a middleman type of company like Roofstock to buy out of state properties and they help facilitate the whole transaction. Or you can source it yourself if you know people or if you have a network of people who know real estate coming on the market, things like that. Um, or you can go all the way far to the other end and like create an LLC and flip houses and do all of that, which I know Malika has a little more experience with. So there's a wide variety with real estate and it's going to depend on how much money you have, how much effort you want to put into it and how long you're okay with your money being locked up. Because obviously putting in like a real estate investment trust in the stock market is much more easy to get out of than owning an investment property on your own that you'd have to like sell and you know all that so um would love to talk about that more in the master class and with your goals but and i have a lot of resources around that um and some playbooks for investment real estate um but yeah it's a great i personally think it's a great thing to get started on and to get on your radar um for your portfolio oh and then so cryptocurrency so I don't know. I can't say what's the best. Um, all I can say is Coinbase is one of the only or maybe the only publicly traded um, cryptocurrency. So they have a little more regulation to them. And so that would be something that I might be a little more comfortable with if I was going to invest in cryptocurrency um, for the first time. And, and uh, that's where I have an account. However, they still themselves are having a lot of up and down and a lot of kind of security stuff and other stuff. And cryptocurrency is still very volatile um, and speculative. So I, I always make sure that people aren't investing more than five to 10% of their investment portfolio in crypto, no matter what. And then the other thing is there are a couple of companies um, that, that pool cryptocurrencies. So you could buy like a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum, a little bit of you know, whatever, whatever in one, one basket. So kind of like a mutual fund. And so that's something that I personally recommend more. Um, there's a company called Titan that does that. And uh, that that's where I've started my crypto journey. Um, and I, to be honest, I'm just still kind of playing around in there and it still makes me a little nervous to do too much there um, because it is very volatile. Okay, so then Diamond's other, their other question was, is there a specific way or education to know which stocks are the best to purchase? Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, you can read a lot on like, what's the best one there. There's, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, um, like Motley Fool, I know, and, you know, other ones. Uh, but it's going to depend, again, on those factors. It's going to depend on, because I, I caution, like, um, you know, reading any of those things because they don't know your situation, your risk tolerance and your portfolio and everything. And so you might hear people say like, Google's the best because they're about to have a stock split in a few days, but they don't know, like, they don't know what your goal is or do you believe in Google or do you need the money in one year? And, you know, will Google be up or down by then? There's no way to know. So you can do your own research. Um, I like, I like some podcasts on it and everything, but I honestly, um, 
if you have if you go into one of these if you go into one of these um platforms there's research tools and they have like their screeners and they have like their top list that they suggest you know in the current moment what do they suggest and these are people who do this for their job all day in and out and they have algorithms and stuff so that would be like a good place to start um and there are a number of like metrics i look at when i am considering an individual stock and so we might do another class or article on what to look for yourself um but again when you're just starting out i i lean a lot more towards um towards mutual funds and and you can even do like sectors like if you really care about financial services or healthcare um but i think in you know a very specific stock you're you're going to really want to believe in the company do your research on the press releases go to one of these websites and use their research tools to understand kind of what they're recommending And then Diamond's other question was, are you able to buy incremental stacks on these like Robinhood? I know Robinhood, you can. Yeah, you are on all of these. So on a lot of these, you could put in like say $100 or whatever amount you're wanting to buy of like Google stock. And it will tell you like, you're gonna get 0.5 of a share and then that's what you get. So yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go to our Poll. So we have, yeah, 50% of the people who responded said, no, they are not currently investing. So that's why they're here. Um, yeah, selecting my own investments and yes, with a robo advisor. Um, so we don't have really have anybody who's working with a financial advisor, which is kind of what we expected. So for those of you who said you haven't started yet, what keeps you from starting and what would make you feel more prepared? to get to get going. Yeah, that's a great question. I'd love to hear. Yeah, and that's okay. We can wait. I'm really good at like just waiting <laughs> to <laughs> people respond. For me it was just like the lack of education. And then um uh thank you for like um telling me like the first step so I'm just I think I need to like find out talk more with uh, Julia and then figure out the next step what to do next yeah yeah I mean it's honestly it's a process and it's like um you do need to learn it the first time and I feel like well, that's why I'm here I don't feel like there's enough education or step-by-step -step understanding of like what is a stock and what am I buying and how do I buy it and like what buttons do I press um that is it's like it's a lot. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we definitely want to work with you on that and like the step-by-step -step process to get started. Um, I will say, like Amy mentioned, once you do get started, even if you're just putting in 10 or however many dollars a month, you can set up the auto transfer. And I, I, I recommend doing that because it takes advantage of the market at all times. So if things are going up, you know, it's great. And but if things are going down, you're still doing it and you're keeping that muscle going. And then when things go back up, you'll take advantage of that gain again with the money you've put in. So um, just kind of starting to build the muscle slowly and um, and asking questions because like there is no place that people learn about this easily. So definitely ask Julia or ask any of your coaches and we can start the conversation. Yeah, I love that. And like we, that's one of the first things we hear from a lot of um, new members that we talk to is like, oh, I've downloaded this app. I just haven't done anything with it. Or like I signed up for all of us, but I didn't do anything yet. And so we're determined to try to, to fix that because we, we want all of you to be building more wealth. We want you to feel more confident doing this. Um, these sessions we'll have once a month now. So every, I think, third Wednesday of the month, um, we'll have these sessions just like We'll share, Jessica will share for like 10 minutes about, you know, something new with investing so that you guys can learn a little bit. But then really we just want to answer your questions so that, because we know there's, sometimes there just isn't a space to do that. So we want to create that. Um, but yeah, Patricia, I asked about the recording. Yeah, so these ones will always record and share with notes. Um, and if you're a person where like, you need time to process things and like, think about it and watch it again, I'm the same way. So that's okay. Like if you if you watch it again and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna sit down and like 
get started. I'm going to pull up some, some of my research and look at things and then just like open up a, open up an account. Um, that's okay too. Yeah. Patricia said. Yeah. And I right. guess just to take a quick step back to on that, like just to talk a little more about the actual steps. Cause I know Lala was like um, asking just about that. Once you open this account, you know, wherever it is and you fund it, then the, the next step is going to be, okay, what do you want to buy? And you can pick stocks or bonds or mutual funds at that time. So then you're going to really take the step of like, okay, what am I buying? Am I buying individual companies shares? Am I buying these like loan type of bond things or am I, buy which sometimes you have to do that on the government website, but, um, or am I buying like baskets of, of, like a basket of a bunch of different companies, which is what I typically recommend. So then once you've made that decision, that's when you can do the research of like going through the top, you know, the four star lists or whatever in, in the account and seeing, okay, like, okay, here's what they recommend for this for domestic, you know, stuff. And here's what they recommend for international. And then you like kind of, it's a little bit of a process in the beginning to start understanding what you're buying. And then kind of once you do that, once you start buying it, then I'm then you, you move to balancing across these factors a little bit. And yes, I agree. I see in the chat here, Emmanuel, yes, I have it's totally normal that people have an account with a, an employer and they don't, you know, retirement account or whatever it may be, and not sure what it's invested in um, or how it's doing. And uh, Again, we we're here to you know give more education around that because the the employers don't don't really help with that. So um, definitely, just even logging in and seeing what's going on is the first step. Yeah, even if you're like if you're ever not sure where to to start, that's always the first step is just like collect all the things, just see what you have, um, and just like you know looking at it. I remember when we had because we had somebody else with a similar situation where it was a Starbucks employee and she didn't know um how much she had and it was like you know 15 or twenty thousand dollars or something and it, and that was that's huge you know that's a big amount to add to your net worth if you don't know that's there so it's so important to just kind of just look and see where things are um any other questions comments um anything that you feel like you would like to learn more about i know we talked about real estate investing um we're going to look for a crypto expert to come in eventually um, as we get more like interest in that. But anything else that that would feel helpful for you to feel more confident about this, don't hesitate to ask because we'll we'll figure out a way to get that information to you. I, I do have another question on impact investing or ESG. I don't know. I don't know even know if those are the same, but I have the option to do that on my platform and the fun, the, it looks like the fun fees are a little bit higher, which is like 0.08%. Um, that's not a lot, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how, I think this might be like personal preferences, but I don't know. I, I've, I feel like I've been hesitating a lot to like switch to impact portfolio because mm -hmm. I just don't know what that looks like, what that difference in fees look like. Yeah, so um, that's not a lot. That's not a high fee. Um, anything, honestly, anything below like 0.3 and you said 0 0.08. So that's definitely not high. Um, but I would I would just check a little bit. Um, there's a lot going on around impact investing. And in a lot of funds, they call it ESG, which is environmental, social and governance, I think, or something. Um, I would do a little bit of research to see what they consider uh, impact investing, make sure that it aligns with what you're considering um, impact investing. I have, um, yeah, it, it depends. I personally found that doing my own research on specific companies that I'm passionate about or specific sectors like renewable energy or whatnot, um, or investing specifically in an impact investing firm is actually what I feel a little more comfortable with just because I think it's a great place to start, um, but you you never know what their criteria for impact is compared to yours. And um, a lot of times it might not be aligned. So you just wanna double check. And with a, the robo advisors, like it's hard to know what what's in there. Like if you're in Charles, if you're in Fidelity and you see 
an impact uh, fund, you can actually click in and see what companies are in there and you can confirm, okay, I'm okay with this or oh, I'm not. But in like Betterment and Wealthfront, um, they have a little more, so you might be able to see, but I would just click through and just like make sure before doing it that you agree with whatever they're calling social impact. That's a really good point. Thank you. Yeah. And I have other resources for other impact investing, like specific um, companies and like venture firms that do impact investing as well, if we ever want to talk about that separately. Of course, that's going to be another account, though, Yeah, <laughs> to add to the account. So, yeah, it kind of depends how many accounts you want. But, you know, we have to make sure we're keeping track and not doing too many. <laughs> yeah, and we'll work to build up our resource library, too. So a lot of this is will be in the community. Um, if like if you go to our the investing section right now, it, it's pretty empty. So we'll have like these masterclass recordings will start being in there. And then um, Jessica, Malika and I will be working together to like put more resources in there so you guys can keep learning. So that's why, again, like I can't stress enough, it's so helpful when we hear questions from you. Um, even if you think of stuff after, just send them to your coach. Um, you could even, I'm just gonna put my email address in here too. You could always just email me with questions and things. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll figure out like, do we put this in an article or a video or do we have a whole separate masterclass on this? Um, but every month we'll be having these to answer questions about whatever it is around investing that you wanna know. Okay, any fi last final questions or comments? This was very helpful. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Lala. Thank you, Jessica, for being here. It's so, it's, I've been so excited just to like be able to have these and have someone who um, is so excited to share information and like break it down and make it super simple for us. So thank you, Jessica. Yeah, this is great. Um, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Let's close out by hearing a money win from somebody who has something to celebrate. Go ahead and unmute and share. I feel like Tanisha is celebrating with coffee or something. <laughs> You're funny. I'm always having like coffee or tea. I'm like a big tea drinker. <laughs> I love it. Okay, anybody, one money win. Let's hear one. Um, I'm booked for the summer with cat sitting and babysitting. Yay, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a huge win. That's amazing. Anybody else? Let's hear one more win. Hey, this is Diamond. I, Diamond. I picked up a little contract type of job. Amazing. I know. Well, it's going to be fun. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so I want you both to go into the community. I'll put it in here and the money wins and share those so we can celebrate you. Anybody else who's, who has any money wins, go ahead and do that. I'm going to yeah. say that it's a money win that you're all here. I know, <laughs> that too, yes. This is, um, you know, like I said, this is not easy stuff. It's not yeah. quite taught, um, you know, like it should be in, uh, in school and things. So I want to congratulate everyone for coming. Yeah. It's amazing just to have these conversations. I think we, like I'm seeing this more and more from our communities that we have a lot of women who are um, taking on like freelance gigs and like doing things to really boost income. So it's just exciting to see, like we are, we're, we're making steps towards building more wealth and that's just like amazing. So I'm excited for all of you. So thank you so much. Again, thank you so much to Jessica. And again, don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions. Um, we're here to help you learn and to help you feel confident. So anything that you need support around, that's what we're here for. Okay, thank you all so much. I will post the recording and notes tomorrow. Um, and yeah, just, just reach out. You know where to find us. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.